On an island in the middle of Tokyo Bay, Japan, a small mountain rises above the waves. Seagulls and crows swoop above the ground, and Mount Fuji can be seen on the distant horizon. And while this island seems like it's a normal geological formation rising up out of the ocean, it is entirely fake, man-made out of garbage. This man-made trash island, called the New Sea Surface Disposal Site, is the final resting place for trash that is produced by Tokyo's 23 districts or wards. The island is crawling with dump trucks and bulldozers which place Tokyo's garbage and waste into a carefully layered sandwich that is 100 feet deep. The island is completely composed of ash from incinerated garbage and trash, pulverized non-burnable trash, and processed sewage sludge, along with real topsoil. Exhaust pipes for methane gas can be seen for miles sticking out from the garbage, while exposed sedimentary layers reveal plastic scraps and other trash, some of it even decades old. It is actually a rare thing to see, because the garbage is mostly invisible here, and there are no seagulls filling the sky over this man-made island, as you would see over another landfill. But this is not your typical garbage disposal site. This is the newest face of Tokyo. Because Japan is a small country with a dense population, the country started doing the only thing it could when faced with sinking in its own trash, and that was to create landfills that could be turned into usable land. The area is part of a site which measures 1,000 hectares, sprawling southward from Odaiba, which is another artificial island facing central Tokyo. When all the work and construction is complete, the western half will be made of soil and will support a terminal for shipping containers. The eastern half, built completely out of garbage, will eventually become a green space with lots of parks and leisure facilities. There is already one corner of the trash-built island that's nearing completion, called Uminomori, which translates to Groves on the Ocean, and is a park that measures 150 hectares, which is about the size of your average golf course. The beautiful hilltop area is already covered with grass and pine trees, and it offers a spectacular view of the city's waterfront and the Tokyo Gate Bridge. The park is supposed to be completed sometime after the 2020 Tokyo Olympics, and surprisingly, future generations will sun themselves here by the sea while relaxing on an island that is built from garbage. During the Edo period, which spanned from 1603 to 1868, the Japanese people recycled almost everything they used. But during the late 19th century, rapid industrialization began to change things. Tokyo created the first modern regulation on garbage management, called the Waste Disposal Law of 1900, and the city got its first garbage incinerator, which was set up in Osaka in 1924. However, the increasing population and increasing garbage was becoming a problem for Japan, and something else had to be done. Landfill construction of the central breakwater started in 1973. It was during this time that Tokyo Governor Ryokichi Minobi declared a war on garbage because the growing metropolis was choking on its garbage and waste during the high economic growth of the post-war era. It was a campaign designed to raise awareness of the problem of garbage and smooth opposition to new garbage facilities. Believe it or not, putting the garbage into the sea is actually a long-standing tradition in Japan and goes back to the 1920s. With the number 8 landfill in Shiomi Umenoshima in the 1950s and Wakasu in the 1960s, as these landfills piled up with garbage, large-scale work began for both garbage disposal and cargo storage. One of these trash islands was turned into Umenoshima Park, which was previously a garbage disposal site from 1957 to 1967. It now holds Umenoshima Stadium, a giant barbecue area, Tokyo Sports Culture Center, a tropical greenhouse dome, and the Tokyo Metropolitan Daigo Fukuryu Maru Exhibition Hall. It's truly hard to believe that this entire area was built on garbage from the city, and it's quite a beautiful place, considering it was previously a waste dump. It would seem that turning garbage into land is the end result of an elaborately engineered process which is remarkable considering the city's density. Tokyo lies at the heart of the world's largest metro area, with more than 37 million people, including the capital's own 13.5 million people. Despite this, Tokyo manages to stay remarkably clean, if not completely immaculate. The streets here are generally tidy, and the air is clean and breathable, due to a large part of how the city handles and burns its garbage. There are three stages, garbage collection, Intermediate processing, which includes incineration and pulverization, 
and landfills. In 2014, Tokyo's waste totaled 2.7 million tons, which was down from a record high of 4.9 million tons in 1989 during the country's asset-inflated bubble economy. Walk around any neighborhood in Tokyo and you'll come across detailed roadside signs with colorful icons and weekly collection schedules of garbage, and many visitors to Japan have noted how meticulous these rules can be. In fact, in the Setagaya Ward, which has a population of almost one million people and is the largest in Tokyo, city officials here published a 24-page guide to garbage disposal and recycling and the people have to follow this guide to the letter or be subjected to fines. But recycling in Tokyo is a little bit different than the rest of the world. Here households and businesses separate their trash into burnable items and non-burnable items, as well as recycling. Burnable garbage is collected twice a week and non-burnable garbage is collected twice a month. Things can be recycled like bottles, glass, newspapers and cardboard and are picked up once a week and oversized trash and appliances are handled by a different system. When the garbage trucks are full, they head to the Shinagawa Incineration Plant, which was opened in March 2006. This new state-of-the-art incineration plant has had extensive refurbishments. It is now a high-tech bonfire for trash and is equipped with two giant incinerators and can burn up to 600 tons of trash per day. This is about the same amount of waste produced by 600,000 people per day. But the population of Shinagawa is only 392,000, so it also handles trash from nearby wards. To track the amount of trash coming into the incinerator plant, the garbage trucks are weighed when they arrive and they dump their hauls from a large platform into a refuse bunker, which is a chasm-like structure that measures about 230 feet wide and can hold four days worth of trash. Just imagine the Death Star trash compactor and you'll get the idea. Of course, the stench of a bunker is overwhelming, but a forced draft fan keeps the internal air pressure lower than the outside to prevent the smell from escaping. Inside this bunker, there are two large cranes that hang from gantries overhead that have giant claws which can be operated either manually or automatically. These claws move the trash to keep it burning evenly and at regular intervals. They grab car-sized clumps of garbage and transfer it to a waste hopper, which then leads to the furnaces. All of this burning does create huge volumes of exhaust gas, but the gas goes through an extensive treatment process to reduce the environmental impact of toxins like mercury and dioxins from getting into the air. By burning the waste at an extreme temperature of more than 1560 degrees Fahrenheit, the formation of dioxins can be kept in check. The safety of exhaust gas coming from the incinerators is regulated by international laws, including Japan but their system works very well. Exhaust gas moving away from the incinerator is quickly cooled to 300 degrees Fahrenheit to prevent dioxin resynthesis. The gas then goes through a bag filter and gas scrubber and the treatment process removes soot, dust, hydrogen chloride and sulfur oxide and what gets released into the air is said to be free of any hazardous materials. Mercury gas is constantly monitored here as well and if any time the limits set by law are exceeded, the incinerators are shut down. This entire operation is monitored around the clock from a central control room that has live video feeds of the furnaces, the bunker, and other parts of the waste disposal plant. One of the most distinguishing features of the plant is that half of it is devoted to pollution control facilities, protecting the environment for all people living nearby. And Japan seems to be doing a fantastic job of keeping pollution down while building huge islands of toxic-free garbage. Of course, it's the incombustibles that are processed, and it's done at two centers on the bay. The majority of incombustible trash is handled by the Chubo Incombustible Waste Processing Center, which is built on a landfill besides Uminomori, and it handles around 60,000 tons of trash each year. Wheel loaders push the incombustible waste onto conveyor belts, leading to hulking rotary crusher machines, in which inside are 280-pound metal hammers that pulverize the waste into bits. These are then separated with magnets into iron, aluminum, and other non-burnable metals. The iron and aluminum are then compacted into giant blocks and sold by Chubo, which makes them a cool $2 million a year. Enormous chopping machines grind away all day long, and oversized garbage like furniture, pianos, and desks are pulverized, stripped of metal, and what's left over is sent to the incinerator. 
Umi no Mori is still undergoing civil engineering work and landscaping, and unfortunately will not be opened in time for the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. However, the adjacent breakwater canal will be used for some of the water sports. And while it might seem like a good idea to build islands from trash, there is a problem that overshadows the islands. The big problem is, what does Japan do when they are full? According to the Tokyo government, this should happen in about 50 years. The reason is that there will be no more room to extend or expand the island because it will start to interfere with shipping lanes. The only solution is to make the best use of what is available. Tokyo is now weighing whether or not to increase the amount of waste that is used for cement production, recovering metal from the incinerator ash, and getting the community to cut down on waste and recycle more. Whatever solutions the country comes up with, it will certainly be interesting to see the garbage islands when they are completed. We hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you'll be the first to know when a new video arrives. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you next time.